beautiful people and welcome to Mimsy Vids. I am Marwa aka Mimsy and today I'm joined by two of my lovely guests. I've got over here MTR's Shams, which I'll put his details below. So he has a charity, Faith to, Faith to Faithless, right? So I will put that down below, do check it out. And then obviously my husband, who you guys probably know already from my channel, v <laughs> He's Vids. too cool, he's too cool to waste. <laughs> I don't know what these little signs are, but Dang anyway. Signs, yeah. So basically this is just gonna be a chilled video. We've got some teas and coffees and snacks and we're just gonna chat basically. Just I just have a few questions. Obviously we're all ex-Muslims, so just kind of a bit more about our backgrounds and our thoughts and things. Uh, it's totally improvised, so yeah. So basically I wanted to start off with, um, us being Muslims, obviously we're, we were all Muslims, um, you know, as Muslims, what was the defining point? Obviously being born Muslim is one thing, but I think for me personally, there was a defining point where I was like, no, I really believe in Islam. Like Islam is the truth and I'm so happy. I'm, I'm so lucky I'm Muslim, I was born Muslim. Um, and this is the one. So what did you guys, first of all, first of all did you guys have a defining point? Not everyone does. Um, I think for me, you, I had many defining points. So I had, you know, uh, at different stages in my life, it was kind of, like you grew up surrounded by Islam, um, in my case at least. And so it's the kind of dumb thing, mm. but you're always look, at least in my case, I was always trying to understand, okay, why? Why is Islam definitely the one true religion? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you're looking for evidence for that. And there's lots of literature you can read to be like, yeah, that's mm. why, you know, the science and Islam mm. works together. Look, it defends it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the literal miracle of, of the Quran, like, okay, mm. you don't speak Arabic or you don't speak uh, Fosha, but you can be like, hey, look, they, the, all these smart people say yeah, that yeah. it is, it must be true. And then, um, you know, you look at politically, you can see the world and you can yeah. be like, so I think there was a lot of different reasons I had at different stages. And sometimes mm -hmm. I discarded reasons if they didn't make sense. So mm. growing up, uh, you know, stuff around the Arabic miracle of the Quran, I think quite quickly as I was got older, I was like, that doesn't make sense because I don't, speak Arabic. classical Arabic yeah. and also okay. the Quranic Arabic is a very specific type of it Arabic. It is, yeah. So you know like even Arabs don't fully understand yeah. Quranic Arabic and classical Arabic so mm -hmm. I was a bit like well that's not really evidence for me so you then have to move to something else yeah. Yeah. and uh, that was it for me in terms of like being religious. I, I was originally religious as well which I know you you said you were quite I ritual. was very religious yeah I mean well I mean it's hard to say I mean I wasn't ever Salafi I always feel like very religious is right at the point of being mm. Salafi which you know. I, I don't know if that's, that's true because you can be like a really Sufi, like really into, yeah, it, like yeah, really yeah. into well, zikr and whatever it is. Do you know what it is? Or it, Shia it, as well. It, yeah, it, Shia. Yeah. What I mean is, I, even with Sufis, I almost feel like Salafis take everything literally and I don't know, when I left Islam, I almost felt like actually maybe that is how you're supposed to do it and that's why I can't agree mm, to it. Mm. And that's kind of my thought process. But I was a bit more Sufi influenced towards the end um, because I kind of was like, oh, they make it sound so much prettier. And like, <laughs> yeah. you know what, it's so much more relaxed and like, yeah. and everything is, is a metaphor. So I was like, oh my God, hell is a metaphor. Yeah, I'll go with that one. That's so much nicer. So it's because, well, it makes sense because like hell is such a crazy, also yeah, these yeah. things are such crazy concepts if you actually exactly. think about it. Like, exactly. it's true. And, then, true. and then the only way you can mentally deal with it and still be Muslim is to have that yeah. kind of, so like I had, I had a Quranist face for about two months. <laughs> like, oh really? Yeah, only two months, right? I was so, a Quranist for, for, so really? yeah. for the most part. Really? Ah, for the most part. You were Quranist for like most for a long time. Was a which basically. which is morally better, mm -hmm. but yes. intellectually hard it's to not. take in, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's my problem because I was like, well, I'm Quranist, but there's some really the problems I have with Hadith are basically in the Quran as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah do with exactly. Yeah. There's still with funky yeah, stuff yeah, in the Quran yeah. that you're like, oh, I don't know. Like the sex slaves are in the Quran. Because yeah. I feel like Muslims would love it if sex slaves were just hadith because then yeah. they could easily be like, yeah. oh, it didn't happen. But like they can't run away yeah, from yeah, it because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. literally yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. And the word possession as well is used. Yeah. Um, but stuff like that, I definitely as a Muslim ignored for a very long time. And I just focused on the good. And like, and there's lots of good things, you know, about Islam that I loved. I mean, for example, even just the idea of we're all, it's very inclusive, you know, it's not, I, mean, it's, I don't want to kind of like, you know, cuss other religions, I don't even know them as well, but I know, for example, Judaism is kind of very not inclusive, what's mm. the word? Uh, exclusive. Um, but, you know, Muslims are like, look, you know, everyone, every color, every race, whatever you are, yeah, there's no racism. we're all it's one. It, 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 there is racism in the, the, the history of Islam, you but can, you in, can in all its job, ideology. You can all job, join Islam as long as you understand that Arabic is the best language in the yeah, world, yeah, yeah, yeah. that Muhammad, yeah. all the best people are Arabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's God's true. God's language true. is Arab. <laughs> that's that's I Arab. used to think that as well, even as an ex-Muslim. But actually, over time, I've been thinking, is it really inclusive, yeah. actually? Yeah. Because 
because it's quite an Arabic religion mm. in terms of like the way Arabic as an institution is mm. pushed. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you you make. Du- but I get, I get your point. Yeah. It's yeah. Inclusive get, versus other mean. ideologies. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, I see what you mean as well. But um, yeah. but the yeah. Ummah. Yeah, yeah. Ummah. The, the idea of um, whenever I think of that as well, I think of Hajj, and I always used to think. I don't have you either of you guys been you haven't been on Hajj, I mean I didn't know. Yeah, I've been. Yeah, I used, to, been I used to live in Saudi, so we used to go Umrah oh, like duh. twice a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you like go every day. You know okay. what you see, again, that's another thing, right? So when you do Umrah, you and when you live in Saudi, you yeah. realise that this is supposed to be the holiest of land. Whether the institute, the country is is a different story. Uh-huh. But the land is holy. Yeah. Mecca is one of the most racist parts of Saudi Arabia. Isn't that crazy? Mm, I don't know. Wow. That. So basically, like if you uh, we'd go there and they'd be like these large groups of like Filipino women and the mutawas, the religious police, would like beat them with a cane like to get really? them, to get them moving in the circle. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about this. It's really, really bad. And that's inside the holiest part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know, maybe my experience is slightly different because I was exposed to like the holy land growing up mm-hmm. all yeah. for ten years. Yeah. But I I'm a bit more disenfranchised with this whole we're all one love, you know, type of thing. Yeah, I, I think it happens more in the West actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 When you're away from yeah. the, when you're yeah. away from it the does. Muslim countries, then, then you feel there's need to have yeah. this. But as, yeah. as a Muslim, though, I thought Muslims are the problem, not yeah, yeah, Islam. Yeah, yeah. I thought that as well. Not yeah, Islam. Yeah, yeah. So if yeah. this is happening, it's not because of yeah, Islam. Yeah. So yeah. they're just making mistakes. So that's always what I used to. By the way, he still says "Alhamdulillah, Mashallah," like yeah. constantly. Yeah. And I don't. I he, he just kind of does yeah. it out. Of, I don't know. I'm why. colonized. I'm colonized. There's no way back. I to be honest, I still say "Inshallah." Sometimes if I'm driving a car and it's me driving because I'm a very bad driver, if I'm driving a van, <laughs> well, you're Asian, isn't it? I do sometimes <laughs> think about either saying Bismillah or doing the, you know, the dua for like right, right. driving, yeah. Bismillah, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I, I, can't, I can't remember. My dad used to say it every single morning mm. before we used to go to school. But you're trying to remember? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. But, yeah, yeah. No, but we also, something we were talking about off camera, but I thought was really funny is that we were really into the Nasheed yeah, of that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I was super into the Nasheed, so I loved like Dawood Warnsby, so I and talked about Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so blessed to be with them. Me and strong, all year long, <laughs> praise to Allah, even in Hong Kong. Yeah, Hong yeah. Kong, Look yeah. at that, look at that, see? Yeah. Okay, so what was your, what was your favourite Nasheed? So obviously that was Native yeah. Dean that you were rapping. No, 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 I know what my favourites were. Which it was one's your favourite? All of them were Dawood Warnsby Ali, all of them. My favourites were all Dawood. I never really listened Same. to him. Oh, he was so good. Well, you didn't really yeah. listen to Nasheeds growing up, but I think I went to a Muslim school. Did you go to a Muslim school? School? Um, no, but I used to go to uh, I used to go to all of the East London mosque like nights. Oh, so you, okay. You know, you sleep over and. You know, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. But I mean, why, I went to a Muslim YM, school. Young, YMO or why? What's that? Young Muslims. Something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's YMCA. cute. That's really cute. You went to a Muslim school, right? So I went to a fully Muslim school. Like we used to sing the sheets as like our. Assembly. You know how people assembly yeah. exactly. So really? people have like plays. We did some Islamic plays, which my dad oh, normally we kind didn't of did. Do that in a, in a thingy. In our school? More so the primary. You only oh, went to the, the primary. So, so right. Waleed went to the same school as me, but secondary. The boys' version. The boys' version. Secondary school. Which is how we met. Everyone always asks how we met. We met at school. Islamic school. <laughs> we met at Islamic, Islamic school. school. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, yeah. we're being really good Muslims. Allah put us together. <laughs> <laughs> and then you took yeah. us apart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we were being totally halal and talking to each other. I mean, yeah. actually... So Through the, the curtain. So, <laughs> yeah. Through yeah. your gaze. <laughs> yeah. 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 So basically, something about just a little side note of Islamic school is really Allah. funny. But the primary school, you're mixed. And then when you get to secondary, they segregate you because obviously it's haram right so the boys are down the road and the girls are here but there was a like a little um corner shop, corner corner shop that used in to the be middle in the, the middle uh, and that was the and that it was, was like the, the <laughs> meeting point the meeting point the boys go so we'd all go and like pretend we're like king sweets like i'm gonna have the boys on the hair mm. <laughs> <laughs> and like it'd be like a stock floor bismillah and like you know with our little hijabs and then um and yeah and i he used to go every morning and get a carrot cake <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically that's basically I know how funny it's so cute oh, I, yeah, yeah. that was his what? breakfast <laughs> wait you had a carrot cake I, I like carrot cake he likes I carrot like carrot cake, cake. so Sorry. I was like oh the first thing I knew about my husband is he likes carrot cake yeah. a lot <laughs> so I, was I was keeping like, it halal I used to go for your cult every like every morning and he used to yeah, go for that so anyway side note okay cool anyway back to <laughs> back to what we're talking about so cool, yeah. My favorite was Dawood Warnsby as well, and yeah. Sam Yusuf. I actually mentioned Sam, Sam Yusuf. Sam Yusuf is cool. Sam I still Yusuf. listen to Sam Yusuf quite a lot, though. But he's I really st- good, I though. I still yeah. listen to Nasheeds now and sing them oh, around the house. Yeah, legit. Like it's still. Do you know what? I'm still in some ways 
culturally Muslim. I don't know how why, but it's I just... you know I say the same thing, and yeah. I get so much hate from both Muslims and ex-Muslims for that. <laughs> like, and you know the way I try to explain it, I've tr- I've, I've I've thought about this a lot. The uh-huh. way I try to explain it is like, unlike people who had like Bangladeshi culture or Pakistani culture, yeah. I didn't really grow up with that. I grew up with same. like Muslim culture because it was a thing at the time in yeah. the UK. Yeah. So yeah. I don't have like Kawali to draw on. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting into that. I've got into it now. Kawali. Yeah, Kawali, Kawali is for example. But that's down. your. Yeah, that's it's your I love Kawali like yeah. now, but I didn't grow up with it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I grew up with it. For, for, yeah, so for yeah. me, I didn't really do, yeah, do the whole yeah. Nats kind of, or the, the, um, oh, the Nats. Sheet stuff, but I did more of the Kawali stuff. I love the like, the, I still listen to Nats as well actually, though, but, yeah. but we never really listened to Nats. We more listened to like Nasheeds. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was all about the Nasheeds. But uh, also, it's just a connection to my childhood more than anything. Yeah, yeah that's so the same for me. Yeah. I don't yeah. connect to the weird things about Islam, but I connect to like, oh, when I was a kid, this was my jam. Yeah, yeah so yeah. it's cute. Um, but anyway, so obviously, we all left Islam eventually. Do you know the words to the whole oh. Yusuf Islam as for Allah song? Oh, no. no. I think I know all of the words. I know all of Sami Yusuf's whole like Al Mu'allim album. But it's, there's, a, it's, there's not a lot of words. It. There's like, there's it's a, a lot. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot of that. Like, Yusuf Islam's one is. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Do you remember the Allahumma Salia? Yeah, 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 I remember that. Say, I like that. Yeah. That was a cool one. Do you know what? Some of you so much He's hate. So good. Muslims are so deep because, like, even cool, like, Muslims get yeah, hate. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, just yeah. like, it's too much. Like, you I felt what? so bad for him. Imagine if he was not born a Muslim, he would be like, a, I think he'd be much bigger in terms of like, because he's got a good voice. Really? Yeah. I think so. I think he's got a good like, if He's he just a, very talented. I think he's a very he's talented But I think he's talented. done quite well. With he's, he's, he's done really well. Don't get me wrong, Sammy. He's done a good job. In case you're watching this video, yeah, Sammy. Yeah, just in case. We're on your Sammy. We're still big fans of yours. I love you so much. You were my childhood. Actually, I got Native Dean's autograph. I met Native Dean. Yeah, yeah. I went to their concert. I was like, whoa. Mm. You know what? It's so funny. Have you ever been to their concert? No, no. Like, Concerts are haram. No, too much risky. Native what is this? Dean. No, it doesn't matter. It was Does all, not matter. It was yeah. all hijabi. There's girls and the boys yeah. sitting haram, next to each other haram. clapping. All the hijabi guys. Clapping, <laughs> clapping is haram. Yeah. You have to say takbir. <laughs> <laughs> Which I used to do, but yeah. even I found it weird as a Muslim. Because I was like, this is a bit cringe, you know? Yeah. You know, funny thing is, I was speaking to an Arab uh, ex-Muslim friend of mine about Sami Yusuf because she likes Sami Yusuf a lot, lot but mm. she finds the English stuff really cringy, right? Yeah, Which, it is. Now that, that I think it about it, it's a bit, it's, it's, it's a bit like, cringy. Meh, no, 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 I'll know? tell you who I found cringy and I didn't listen to. I listened to all the Nasheeds oh, no. and I'm really sorry, he knows who it is. I'm really sorry if like he happens to watch my video. <laughs> all, the, all the Muslim <laughs> he But Zayn Bika. Mm. Oh yeah, I find him really oh, cringy. He's like, I he tries too hard. He tries too hard. To me, he tried me with Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit, yeah. Oh my God, have you seen Muslim Justin Bieber? No. He's like a child with like a little quiff and he does like, he like, he like sings about, you're not sure whether he's singing about girls or God, but it's like, it's really <laughs> Justin Bieber. That's, That's my guy. Yeah, it's That's really my guy. weird. <laughs> So moving on from um, Nasheed stuff. So obviously there came a point where we left Islam. So I just wanted to know if there was, again, I don't know if there was a particular kind of tipping point for you. Mm. I think it's never just one reason. So I don't know why Muslims kind of ask, if they ask me anyway, I don't know about you guys, but they always ask me like, what was it? Tell me, like, what, what was the reason? Why? And I'm like, dude. Yeah. I mean, like, what do they, <laughs> they, they, it's like sometimes they expect me to go, oh, you know what? I grew up not reading anything. Yeah. And then I saw sexual slavery and I was like, mm. no, and I left. Yeah. Like, it's that almost never thing, happens. Yeah. Like, you, you, know, you, you know about stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You know. yeah, I can't give you a simple answer. Yeah. But there sometimes is kind of a lot of things and then a kind of tipping point. So I don't know if you guys had a tipping point. Did you? And what was it? Um, for me, uh, one of the things I, I find, because I talk with a lot of ex-Muslims and other exes from like ex-Jehovah's Witness or whatever, is I think it is a bit 50-50. So you've got a bunch of people who, you know, um, leave after they go to Umrah and you know it's, it's raining and they're crying and all that and then they realize they're an ex-Muslim. That does happen. Uh, in Umrah they realize? I know, I've known a few people who go on Hajj or Umrah and they leave. Allah. And <laughs> Wow. And then there's a whole bunch of other people like me, I would put myself in that category mm-hmm. where it was like a phased journey. Like mm. so you kind of you kind of you know for me it was always I have questions like everyone else and that's yeah. fine. And you have answers to the questions. Yeah. yeah. 
the relationship between Muhammad and Aisha, the, the role of uh, LGBT people, or blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you have answers to them. But as I got older, some of these answers just stopped making yeah. sense, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it was a very phased thing. Yeah, yeah. But it was phases. So I do remember there was yeah. like two months where I couldn't handle the hadith. So I was like, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> always... I, yeah, because you, you read stuff and you're like, yeah. wait, he killed... They killed everyone above the age of basically 15 in the Banu Qurayza. And yeah. you're like, yeah. how am I yeah. supposed to handle that? How right? is that okay? Yeah. So, so, so then I was like, okay, Quran only for like two months. And then you realize, wait a second, some of the same stuff in hadith is in the Quran mm. and I can't handle that. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so for me, it was very phased. Well, yeah. I know for you guys, it was For me, it right? was like, uh, you know the game Jenga? Yeah. Where you remove ha, one, ha, one ha, thing ha, at a time. Ha, 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 ha. And yeah. I didn't realize it, but this Jenga foundation or building where I was getting weaker and weaker. Mm. And it just took... I literally remember the day, I remember the conversation, and I remember the feeling I had that that last block was removed and everything came down. So I went from being a religious Muslim, I believe Islam is true, yes, okay, fine, I have a bit of trouble reconciling some stuff like science and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But I'm still a Muslim, there yeah. was not a single doubt in my mind that yeah. I was ever going to leave. Mm-hmm. But once that Jenga was it's removed, it's all super quick. Like, Whoa! And mm-hmm. the problem is like, then you apply the fact that you don't believe for the first time mm. to everything. Everything stops going, yeah. wait a second, that Whoa, thing! Yes! What? Exactly. Wait a second, that exactly. thing! And you're yeah. like... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. what happened to me. That's, That's precisely exactly what happened, what happened to me. So think... once these lenses, once these goggles were removed... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was saying earlier that for me, like I also, like, like for you, Islam is not just about pray, fasting, but it's about, politi- it's about mm. politics, it's about international affairs, about state and, history, and government, yeah, yeah. history, all of that. So when when I left Islam, I didn't just say, okay, I'm going to, all my other beliefs are still the same. All of my beliefs mm. changed. Everything, just complete, changed. everything just was like yeah. up in the air yeah. and I had to re-examine what the hell do I believe yeah. now. Because yeah. yeah. that lens was removed. So now I was looking at things completely differently. Yeah, I completely agree. For me, it was more because I think, uh, you know, mine and Waleed's kind of journeys were very different actually, mm. uh, even though we both kind of You're left, more spiritual as well. I was, I was kind of more spiritual in the sense of like, I... You would pray. Oh, is that actually it's that, a sign? That, is that what? What is happening? <laughs> I'll ask can you can you hear that? Yeah, it's, it's my it's my. Can you hear that? Imagine we said no. We <laughs> said, oh my god! Yeah, I'd be like, this is like Neil Armstrong. You know yeah, they say all yeah, oh, yeah. the moon. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of would pray more. So I would like. I think I don't even know how much. Did you like pray quite regularly? I don't uh, even not know. As, not, not as much. Not as really. You. I mean, no Pakistanis. So what I, was the hardest prayer for you guys? Fajr or Isha? Really, Tarwiyah. Oh, as in general. Oh, like as in generally. Forget Fajr, bro. Fajr. <laughs> Fajr was the hardest prayer. But I would, I would, I was, I was like very strong with my prayers. I mean, I didn't just pray. I would do like Sunnah before and Sunnah before after. Sunnah. Yeah. So like, wow. I was like on it. So and I would like read Quran before bed. Like, I was very ritualistic in like what I did. Mm. And it, for me, it was like I would legit talk to God. And also, this is really strange. Like he laughs at me. This, I would legit be like, Allah, please, like, please. Just, you know, like, so help, out, help, so me out, help me out with this. Like, yeah. come on. Like, I would all do, like, constantly, like, throughout the day. And then, like, another thing is, so my family, from my dad's side and my mom's side, are known to be Ahl al-Bayt. Allah. Which, which is basically related to the Prophet. Allahu Akbar. So, and I, we actually, in Morocco, have, like, a big family tree. And we have a card from Saudi Arabia saying that we're Ahl al-Bayt. So it's, like, an official thing. Mm. So I was brought up, like, you, you're Ahl al-Bayt. Like, this is what you are. So I was always like, oh, okay, cool. So I can, like, talk to him, too. So I was like, <laughs> so I'd be like, not pray to him, because that's, VIP like, card. that's, like, shirk. Yeah, but yeah. I'd be like, dude, like, we're related. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's okay. Wait, wait, wait! I have a question then. <laughs> Did because I get this asked, I get this not asked at me, but you know, like when someone is asking you something, they're trying to tell you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I get people come up to me and be like, "But like, just close your eyes and pray to God and just ask Him to give you guidance." Did you ever do that? Did all, you like all the time? Like, Listen, bro, like I'm losing it right now. Mm. All the time, all the time. And I wanted to ask you guys because when I so what my point was. Um, I think slightly different for me. It it was almost similar to you. It happened in phases. So I kind of changed my viewpoint. But then when I got to that point of like, oh my God, I don't believe it. It was like devastating for me. And I remember crying, like really crying. Yeah, like like all the time. And I was like, not telling him obviously, Um, but I would cry all the time. Because I was like, I really don't want to not believe it. Yeah, yeah. And I and I would actually be like, Allah, please help me understand this. Like everything yeah. I didn't understand, I would be like, help me understand this. And then eventually it kind of came to the point where I was like, okay, I'm yeah. just going to have to be okay with yeah. not understanding it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of had a phase where I was like, um, I was like, nothing makes sense anymore to me. And I was like, I'm going to go look at the Hadith in Quran as if I wasn't born Muslim. Yes. And I said, God knows what's in my heart and what I really care about. And I, yeah. I, I, I genuinely wanted to be like, none. Yeah. I want to be Muslim because 
it's so painful not to be. At least that's what yeah. I thought. It's easier as well, man. It's so much easier, yeah. Family and, Muslim. Yeah, so yeah. then yeah, I was so like, much easier, yeah. and like, I really was like, look, God will not. And you know, like, you read that stuff and you're like, there's no, there's, it's just impossible. Yeah. And But there's no, you don't have a solution to that. No. It's like, Okay, I don't believe, but what does that mean? Like, mm. who am I? Who like, am I? Yeah. Who am I? Like, what your am I? identity. Yeah, yeah. You feel like you've. Lo- I felt like I'd lost everything, yeah, yeah. and for me, I still mm. feel like I'm out of the club. I don't know yeah. if you guys feel this. Yeah. No, I'm too I in the club know. now. I think I got too many Muslim friends. But you that. see now, huh? I got too many Muslim friends to be out of the club. <laughs> My Muslim friends who are like actually chill with me, they come with to me with like even like problems because a lot of them know there's a lot of problems for them yeah. and they don't trust the advice they get from Muslims because yeah. obviously they know that Muslims are going to be biased so yeah. they'll ask me for my opinions wow. Wow. And I, and both <clears throat> as a Muslim with my Muslim hat and as an ex-Muslim and I'll tell them both and they can do with it what they want wow. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's really Mufti, interesting Mufti, Mufti, Mufti. No, no, it's not like that it's more like they trust me and what to I'm to give an honest biased. yeah not biased opinion yeah. No, 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 that, that's a good point actually but no a, a lot of my friends my really close friends who like you know, I went to Muslim school, so from year one mm. till now, my whole, like, basically family to me, they're kind of like, so Islamically, you're not really supposed to be nice to an apostate. Not yeah. really. Really? Well, not really, because you're not, first, firstly, Islamically, we believe you're not really, I mean, we believe, I'm like, acting like I'm so Muslim. But as in, Islamically, we were taught, even at Islamia, like, okay, you guys are in this school because your friends need to be Muslim. Really, yeah, yeah. your friends need to be Muslim. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. because yeah. Islamically, you can't get that close to a non-Muslim. You can't trust even Jews and Christians. Yeah. There are hadith about, like, say hadith about not trusting. Uh-huh. And I think the other issue is also that, um, uh, apostates are slightly different. They're not kafar. They're not sorry. They're not uh, non-Muslims they, because non-Muslims you can bring in. Yeah. Yeah. Murtad are like yeah. people who are like you know this is true and yet you still decide to come. Yes. So it's hypocritical. It's very yeah. problematic. Yes. Worse. Worse. Very well, it's not quite monafikun, but it's like it's particularly problematic because they're, they're basically saying you know this is true and yet yeah. because yeah. you want to you know yeah. in my case because clearly I want to join the Illuminati yeah, 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 yeah. Have, you know, be paid get, by the Zionists drink lots yeah. of alcohol which I don't even do really yeah. but like you know all that kind of stuff they think yeah. that that's why yeah. so the Mormons will have the same thing the Mormons will say the reason you left Mormonism is you know it's true but you wanted to drink coffee do you know what I mean because they <laughs> yeah. got the coffee thing yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they go, oh, and alcohol coffee. they don't drink alcohol yeah, either, yeah, yeah 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 that's but amazing yeah. you want to go to Starbucks yeah. <laughs> just no, like, no. Starbucks no, so there's pictures of people Mormons who leave it and the pictures are them with the Starbucks coffee oh and that's God. them coming out that is so funny that's hilarious that's crazy oh gosh but see we don't do any we still eat halal <laughs> we don't yeah. and that, that's, that's the thing that bugs me <laughs> That's the thing that bugs me, is that like literally everyone is like, it's, you know, you guys just want to follow your desires and you just want to, it's because you're in England and you just want to like go clubbing and you just want to do this. Yeah, more, I, I, I actually think there's more ex-Muslims in the Middle East than there are even in the West. Really? I think because you're in a theocratic state. I think so too. You, I, honestly, yeah. like when, uh, if you look at places like Saudi Arabia, 5% of the population is about ex- is atheists. Wow. That's the current estimate. I reckon it's higher than that. I reckon it's so much yeah. higher. This, they're not going to say. And people are always saying like, oh, you know, Muslim countries, they're so perfect. There's so much like... I mean, to be fair, no one says that. <laughs> no, no, no. no. So, hold on. So let me, come, let me come to that point. So basically, if you go into my, why are Muslims, what was it? Why are Muslim women oppressed? Mm. Or are women, uh, Muslim women oppressed video? On there, I was having a few discussions with people who were basically saying I was chatting a load of crap because I was saying that in the West, you know, essentially a woman can go out with a miniskirt and she's not going to get like abused mm. as much as, as much yeah. as if she were if I was to go out even with hijab in like Egypt or like Saudi Arabia yeah, 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 yeah. it's dangerous yeah. you can't go out at certain times you yeah, have to yeah. go out with a guy you have to have a, you know a chaperone it's dangerous because of the the society and I had so much comeback of yeah. people saying what are you talking about there's there's no rape in Muslim countries there's, there's <laughs> no this in Muslim countries there's no this it's Muslim so countries stupid. are the safest countries but, but to be honest most of those people have not lived in Muslim countries exactly I bet you exactly right. they haven't lived there yeah. And and the truth is, that those countries are so corrupt that they don't even keep they don't even keep it's count of yeah, stats yeah, yeah. of no, what's not. going on. Yeah. Everything's hidden yeah, undercover. Yeah, that yeah. amount of crap that happens, yeah, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, show us stats." I'm like, "Dude, you have no idea what you're talking I about." I mean, I'll give you an example. In Saudi Arabia, in Saudi Arabia, there's a massive problem with the Filipino maids being raped. Oh my yeah. god! Kids, and then they get oh, taken my... as wives yeah. because that's a legal way. The of legal way. Yeah. And suddenly you're a wife, mm-hmm. and you're not allowed to leave. Like, how yeah. is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, it, and that's just Saudi Arabia. I mean, there's. You but know, that's an Islamic thing. Yeah, 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 obviously, yeah, yeah. that's that's, it, that's a sex yeah. slave, well, essentially. Someone you're under- unwallowed, right? If, if you're yeah, it's complicated because the the argument would be that 
they should have consent. Yeah. yeah. But what is consent if you're a maid of someone? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's where it gets complicated. Well, what would be what was consent in even in that situation in the prophet's time when you were at war and you were taken? So all those women you mentioned yeah, yeah, yeah. the no what were they called that tribe that that they all were killed. Banu Quraiza. So all of those people were killed. All those women and children were taken as slaves. Yeah, yeah. So what choice did they have? Did yeah. they have a say in that? Come on. Mm. That, slavery was a very big issue for me as a Muslim because yes. I think me too. for a lot of Muslims and ex-Muslims it's a big problem because it's so obvious mm. yeah. and we live in a yeah. world where we finally understood slavery is a bad thing. Like, <laughs> it's not that Islam is particularly finally. special with no, like, having not. slaves. No. Yeah, yeah. We've had slaves for history but finally the world has realised hey this is maybe a bad you know thing. You know yeah, what yeah, I find yeah. it really strange that like, a lot of people I don't know if, it, if this is like a UK or Western thing a lot of Muslim people are like oh black people went through slavery and like white white supremacy and like oh Jim Crow and white people so like just they will bash that. Yeah, but you yeah. talk about Islamic slavery. No, but no, but they had rights. No, yeah, yeah. No, they no, no, man. It's like, gave, hang on a second. Hang on a second, guys. They gave them the oh, choice l- to be Let me tell you one of the worst. So I was in America with ex Muslims in North America, and we were doing, uh, me, Muhammad Sayyid, and Armin were doing like a talk about reform. And I brought up slavery, and there was a, this is a video, like you can see it on YouTube. I was talking about, uh, I did three months of research about slavery in the pre Islamic era, because often people will say, oh, but Muslims, uh, Islam brought a type of system to slowly bring slavery yeah, to yeah. an end, which is wrong because slavery existed in every single Islamic yep. state. Mm. And in fact, the transatlantic slavery was... was, was yeah, was, it don't even... Don't, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not <laughs> even... Yeah. And basically, yeah. like, a, a, there was a there's a woman in the audience who, uh, from what I could see, mm. she was a Muslim, she wore the hijab, she was mm. African-American. And we, we got into a bit of a dispute about this because she was saying that Islamic slavery wasn't bad. Mm. And then she had the... Guts to try to tell me that their Islamic that the slaves within Islam were happy slaves. You know they were castrated. That's what they say. No, I know the amount know. of men that were no, castrated. I mean, it's to, worse um, than that. Mm-hmm. Today in Mecca there are Ethiopian castrati. Really? Today and there's a National Geographic article you can read about that. And the Saudi government when they're asked about it, they say, Oh no no no, we got them when the last castrated castrations were happening, but that was in the 1800s. So you're saying that these people were around for 200, 300 years? <laughs> they evolved. What, what, and they're all what, black. Nice e- they're all black Ethiopians. So they're the the protectors Terrible. of the Kaaba, and you can you can they, you go there and you can see them. So the other thing I wanted to know from you guys actually is, do you think Muslims can actually assimilate into the West, into the Western society? Because obviously there are people like Lauren Southern Katie and Hopkins. Katie Hopkins who basically say no, they can't, and this needs to stop. We need to stop Muslims from coming in. So Lauren Southern, Katie Hopkins, and Anjum Chowdhury. Oh, yeah, 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 that's yeah, true yeah, as well. Very yeah. true. Yeah. So where do you guys stand? In with one this? word, yes or no? What would your one God, will you do always passing the question to yeah. what, well, what about you? What about you? I would say yes, they can, but it obviously depends on the kind of Islam that they, be, that, that, that they yeah. believe. Of course, yeah, they yeah, can. Of course, it's physically possible. When I was a Muslim, when you were Muslim, you were Western. Yes. Muslim. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's, okay, okay. Ooh. Were you, were you, did you see yourself as a Western Muslim or not? No. Oh, okay, so I why thought, not? I thought that Muslims were one ummah, mm. and I thought that the Western system was wrong, and I thought that we would eventually end up with a caliphate because... Oh, really? That's, wow. what, that's what's predicted. And I did not think that. And wow. the Mahdi will come down. Yeah, uh, you be the Mahdi? Yeah, of course. I don't believe that. I mean, I did, but, yeah. But the Mahdi is like, yeah. like legit... Islamic, like you can't. Yeah, you... Mufti Abu Layf denies. I, I don't know if he denies that or not. Mufti, but, uh, I mean, I like Mufti them, Abu Layf, yeah. but he says a lot. So of there, are, there's a minority of sheikhs that don't believe in the Mahdi. Yeah. The, 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 the thing majorities. is, there is there is there sort of jal. There, can, there, there are thinking minority. There, there is thinking to draw on to say that. Yeah. But obviously, like the literalist the literalist explanation would be like yeah. It, it's, and, and the mainstream approach is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, but, but okay, so you. This is okay. Now I did not know this side of you. You're a dangerous guy. This guy's a dangerous guy. I'm telling you. No, no, no. For me, bringing the caliphate was through peaceful process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that one. I got that as well. I didn't. Think too, <laughs> I, I didn't think too much about it, but I definitely thought. I definitely thought eventually maybe all the Muslims would move and like well, like I always thought like, like a utopian yeah, yeah yeah exactly like we'd all eventually I even thought myself like I should probably move to a Muslim country eventually really yeah 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 because oh. uh, like eventually because you got the extremist man <laughs> <laughs> I was I was like yeah we can because I was and you're like well yeah. actually that's not true because I wasn't okay yeah no because the thing is is you you want to have you understand Islam as being perfect, so the politics are perfect, Sharia law is mm. perfect, everything's perfect. So why, so why would yeah. you not want to yeah. live in like that utopia? So, yeah. as you said. So, um, and then when, when you unravel it and realize it's not perfect, that's when it all kind of crashes okay, okay. down. Okay, so back to the question: Do you think they can then? Um, yes, because Islam is man-made, so you can be anything. But, okay, okay, okay. But, that, but, that's, not, that's not a proper answer. But but I do think Islam has specific issues with otherism. 
So yes, other yes, writing. Yes, so yes, yes. just like I would look at a someone from the south of the USA who might be very um, conservative mm. as yeah. potentially having issues with otherism. Right. Like, so yeah. they would but also at, with Islam is worse than. I, I actually. It's actually scriptural. Yeah. I think political ideology and Islam and scriptural ideology can be just as entrenched. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So just because I've met a lot of people like that who are very conservative mm. and their journeys out of that is the same as an ex-Muslim's journey, right? Yeah. In, in terms of like, in terms of honestly, the journeys are very similar. So you're right that where you draw it in Islam, but like, let's be honest, we don't just draw it from scripture. Like a lot of Muslims will not even know scripture. Mm. They'll draw it yeah. from what their peers are saying, what the community what is saying, what the leadership told. is saying. Yeah. So it's more than just scripture, right? Mm. So I do think people, Muslims can assimilate um, the issue we have is we have a quite a literalist ideology when it comes to Islam in the West, mostly. Okay, yes. so, so we make it hard. So, so it's, quite, it's basically what you've said. But, it depends on how you look at Islam. Okay, okay. But I think it's happening. Let, let's talk about the Muslims or the type of Muslims and the type of Islam that exists in the UK and in Europe. Europe, and, Europe is different from America in terms of yep. Muslims. So let's look at Europe. Do you think the Muslims have assimilated, by and large? Yes, you'll find obviously individuals in some communities, mm. but by and large, whether it's France, whether it's Turkey, whether it's the UK, I think. I do think, you think we really? I, Muslims I, I, have really? I think assimilation is a different, difficult word because if you're a mm. national of that country, mm. your belief system is also part of that country. Mm. So what are you assimilating to? Because you have third generation French people who are very, very orthodox in terms right. of like Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. So for yeah. example, I, I, the way I think about these things is try to unbiased myself by looking at others. So Hasidic Jews, in the, mm. in the UK, Hasidic Jews do not assimilate, but they've been here sometimes for four generations. The difference right. being, as far as I'm aware, they don't want to sub unconsciously or have a dream of uh, subverting the foundation of the state. So they're not going to say uh, yeah, unless they do. Yeah. It, no, no, you're right. They so yeah, whereas yeah, like you yeah, were saying, yeah. oh, one day, this, this, one day yeah. the UK will be a caliphate. This will be a Sharia law, right? Even if you don't actively do anything, you're like, mm. well, subconsciously we know. I, it's an ideological utopia, yeah. right? And that is problematic. And yeah. I think that yeah. really restricts yeah. some level of integration. I don't like the word assimilation because assimilation... Or integration, let's say. The, the reason is because assimilation gives this idea of another body joining up a bigger body mm. but in reality muslims have been in a lot of these countries for a long time yeah. that's mm. not the problem the idea the problem is political ideology you can be even white mm. right british yeah. and be then convert into a very extreme interpretation of islam and then you're not integrated anymore yeah, yeah. you're yeah. looking at the other yeah. as normal yeah. do you know what yeah. i mean so i look it, at it as ideology ideological separation that's so, yeah. so back to the question given what mm. we know from yeah. the muslims and yeah. we've spoken to you spoken to many muslims yeah. we, we were we, in we were the muslim have, community yeah. not just like yeah, but from I mean, the saying, outside view like we've spoken to different communities Muslims, yeah. different oh, yeah, types yeah, of Muslims, yeah, yeah. and they all have this. Even like the more moderate ones, are like yeah, this is all cool, but you know, be real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So moderates can be just as bad. Just as bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I would say, can Muslims? I think, I, I think, I think, I'm, I think, given the type of Muslims you know, in Europe, honestly, I think it's going to happen because largely because of ex-Muslims. Because I think the reason that you had such a, mm. such a virulent, strong political ideology in Islam is because you didn't know you could leave. So you were sure you were right. 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 right? So with any kind of extremism, it's always about, I am 100% sure the earth is flat. Yeah. Right? If you're 100% yeah. sure the earth is flat and everyone else is lying to cover that, you could do extreme stuff or you could believe extreme stuff. So, but if you have Walid to talk to in your right. in your family or in yeah, your friendship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then that makes you leave Islam, therefore you're not. No, no, you don't have to leave it. You don't have to leave it. Oh, you you have have if you're just a Muslim, if you have this one seed of doubt as a Muslim, yeah. you do not have that potential to be really extreme because you're like, what if I'm wrong? Right. And a lot of Muslims didn't have that. I didn't have that growing up. Right. Right? Yeah. If I had That's spoken right. to myself when I was a kid, even if I had never left Islam, I would have been like, oh wait, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Let's unplay devil's advocate. I think by 2050, London will be majority Muslim. I think. Like what? That. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, I think no, I don't think so. You're right. If you're assuming the birth rate is the same, it's not going to be the same. Muslims are having way fewer children now than ever before. So, really? okay, it'll be, it'll be like near, it'll be a bit a, a sizable minority. It could be the we're biggest already, minority. We're already a size. Like people from a Muslim background in the UK are massive, anyways. Right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, sure. We'll be. So we'll be we with the biggest, possibly the biggest minority in the UK. Sure. Why would that growing body of people have? Why would they have the need to change anything if where they live is becoming more like? You know, I went to Luton, some Bury Park, like ninety nine percent Pakistani Muslim, mm -hmm. East London, like whether it's Allgate or some other areas. Mm. If they're more Muslim, more Islamic, mm -hmm. why would they need to change? They any have what they want. Why would they need to change? Because because by definition, when you stop often with uh, diaspora and minorities, it's like you feel like you're tiny, mm. so you stick much stronger to whatever you stick to. Mm. In America, Muslims are extremely wealthy, 
Mm. They're, they're the wealthiest because they're mm. highly skilled. Mm. The immigrants, so, the immigrants. They're immigrants. So they're much more integrated into American culture because they're, 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 they have a certain amount of power. Mm. Yeah. Now, here, that power is becoming quite great within these, this minority community, which didn't always exist before, you're right. Mm. Mm. And I think by definition, that will mean you have much more, you're much more integrated with wider society. Also, man, it's just happening. Like, wh- whatever. Really? I don't know. Man, no. Uh, like, this is anecdotal, and this is always going to be anecdotal. But, but like, and actually, it's not anecdotal. Um, there was a recent s- uh, review that, uh, you know, with young Muslims, about 60% of them are against homophobia. Like, they, they're, 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 they would believe in locking up gays, right? Mm. That's bad. 60% yeah. is a big number, right? Yeah. But that means 40% have no problem with LGBT marriage as well. That was, so it was about marriage. Right, right. 60% not okay with it. 40% are. That means 40% of Muslim young people mm. are okay with gay marriage. Yeah. That's a big... That's crazy, actually. You wouldn't think that, right? Because that... Well, Islamically, they can't... That, that's, you can't defend that. Like, to, cause, yeah. cause, cause you can also say, I'm, I don't like... I'm okay with gay people as people, but I don't believe in the marriage. Mm. And yet they're actively saying they're 40%... 40%... Are saying they're okay with gay marriage. I think they're just divorcing themselves from it. Like Maybe. you can do what yeah, you want to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, which is but, better. But than... also, you know what's happening? Young people, young Muslims are engaged with people online. They're engaged yes. with each other. Mm. Yes. They're completely connected. Our, our generation was very different, Walid. That's true. Right? That's and a good point. And we can't forget that. Like our, the younger generation, there's polarization. They're mm. becoming more extreme, and they're also becoming more liberal. Yeah. And the, yeah. And yeah. I, th- I, I think the liberals will win because they're. Muslims, especially when they're young, use the language of human rights to defend their own rights. They'll yeah. say Islamophobia. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. If you believe in human rights, and discrimination, you, have, yeah. you have to start applying that logic elsewhere. Yeah, elsewhere. And they are. Yeah. So I'm optimistic. I think I can defend my optimism. Mm. And anecdotally, I am seeing that. Like, I right. really am seeing more Muslims having to defend them against them against yeah, us, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Which forces them to think about their own their position. Own, yeah, yeah. I mean? yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I'm, that I could be wrong. I mean, that sounds well, no, I great. I think yeah. that, that would be good <laughs> for the Muslim societies to kind of, yeah, become more liberal thinking and, and all of that. So I hope so. Well, I don't know though. I just, I just don't know. I, I just look at, I mean, maybe in the UK it's better, when, but when, again, I've never, I've never, I've, I've been to France, but I haven't seen the Muslim communities in France and yeah. Germany. Would you, would you say there it's much worse? It, it's very polarized. So, um, French Muslims who are much more like integrated into French society, mm. all, you would in the West, in, sorry, they're not considered Muslims really, even if they are, mm. right? While the very extreme elements are considered Muslims, mm. but they're both from the Muslim background, right? So I think they're very polarized in France, and France is a particular issue with racism. Like yes. I've been to France a few times. Yeah. I know a lot of ex-Muslims and Muslims. All the ex-Muslims in France will talk to you about racism. Wow! Right, yeah. all of them. Yeah. Because they, it's not like in the UK where if we have racism, it's a little bit subtle. Yeah. In France, it's very polite. It's very yeah. It's very British. Yeah. Very yeah. Very <laughs> Hello. Oh, I've been to India. I'm like I'm from Bangladesh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I guess. Yeah. 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 But um, but British yeah. but French racism, from what I understand, is like really bad. So mm. yeah. the polarization is a reaction to that. But also there is just Islamism in France as well. Yeah. There is. Yeah. So there's a big problem in France that we. I think we are able to move forward a little bit in the UK. I think there, for a lot of reasons, it's going to be harder. Their number of Muslims is much larger than uh, we have. In... I think we have a lot of Muslims in the UK. I don't know. I don't know the stats. Uh, okay. I've, I, I do think there are more. Loads of Algerians and Moroccans, right? Yeah, they, they, I mean, they, there's some. There's like 10%. What was the funny thing is, like, percentage. Algerian and Moroccan Islam was very different. It's much more liberal. It's becoming extreme That's all the time. That's why I've, I've said that before on my before. channel. So yeah. the North Africans were yeah. originally, if you go back home, so obviously, if anyone doesn't know, I'm half Moroccan. So when, so when I go to Morocco, you know, they're very Sufi orientated and chill. relaxed and very chill. You know, yeah. he, went, he went with me just I, last year. I, I went last year with you. I mean, to the beach is women wearing bikinis yeah, yeah. and no one was like yeah, yeah. It's, and I was like it's kind of this would never happen, happen I think like one of the things is also that they had this identity uh, especially in Tunisia with like the Amazigh you know like uh, what what would you're not supposed yeah. to use the word Berber but that's kind of yeah you know the Berbers, and, yeah. and now recently there's been a resurgent of um, Amazigh kind of culture so I think because Amazigh culture is quite anti-Islam it is. Oh, well, yeah. they have, the old grandmothers will have tattoos on their tattoos face. Tattoos on their what? face. Do you know but they'll, but they'll be tattoos oh, be with hijab. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's really that's funny. Kind yeah, of what yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. But the, and the, there is a bit of like the racism you will see in Morocco. Um, I mean, I don't know about Algeria and other countries, but I know there is. So our family are known as, particularly in Morocco, they have kind of like the Arabs who they say are a lot of them are Ahlul Bayt because like some relatives mm. of the Prophet came and settled there basically. So, but there's a lot of racism and there's kind of a splitting of the yeah, Berbers yeah, yeah, and the. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 
yeah. yeah. But, but for some reason, and I think it's what one of you guys said, just about how when you come to the, the West, you know, you want to kind of cling on to, you know, this diaspora, you know, our culture, you've got to cling on to it. So they become extreme, which I think, <clears throat> I mean, you've mentioned, obviously, this culture is becoming more modern and liberal and whatever, but I've always seen it as actually they've become more extreme than their parents. No, that's true. Yeah. But I think that was a... That was a that was a reaction to a few things. One, there was a ridiculous amount of money being pumped into mosques yeah. from Saudi Arabia and the Gulf countries. Yeah, that's true. That's kind of stopped, right? So really? You, yeah, it has. Why? People, because <coughs> of counter extremes and like because people are blowing people up. Mm. So the government's like, <laughs> maybe we should like. Okay, we like to give money to the Saudis, but maybe we should stop that money mm. kind of coming back. Mm. Okay, so that's one thing. Mm. Okay. The second thing is I think like there's a much more uh, wider awareness about ex-Muslims mm. now, like. Five years ago, this was not the case. Like, you know, the fact that you can now do it, you know, you have a chai and you're like, yeah. hey, my name's Benji. Like, <laughs> that's a very different experience right. yeah, than yeah, yeah. back in the day, yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah. just like a, one or two activists, you oh, know? Yeah. Now it's like people that you mm. just grew up with, right? Well, my dad, I mean, yeah. he, we, I yeah. used to honestly yeah. get nightmares about like people coming to our house and just like really? killing my dad yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. like, in our sleep. Like, because your dad was like, one of the, <laughs> the original the OG. 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 The OG, yeah. OG. yeah well yeah. like our, you know, in many ways they've paved the road for us but mm. we are a different uh, time and place and people and I think yeah. what's happening is that's normalizing it in a way that didn't exist mm. yeah. and so that is also you cannot forget that because that's a snowball effect it, it's accelerating yeah. it's not going to ever reduce now yeah yeah I mean that, yeah. that's why that's why I'm doing it and I'm yeah. sure that's why mm. you're doing mm. it I know uh, I'm doing it for the Zionist <laughs> I don't get any money, that's, money. Uh, that's... I spend money on this stuff I, I'm so broke every yeah, time yeah, I spend yeah. money on it I know I know all everyone thinks like, we get like paid. have you seen my I buy all my camera equipment from eBay second hand I always hustle it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, it's just, I wish I, I mean, that'd be great. If, if any Zionists want to sponsor any Illuminati want to sponsor us, if you're a lizard person yeah. and you looked at us and you were like, you know what, these people would make good lizard yeah. people, like, bring it on. Bring it Give on. Give us the money. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's all about, it's all about helping society and your charity is so good for like helping faith the people. Faith to faithless. Faith to faithless. So do check it out if anyone's kind of struggling. We have loads of videos. Um, not just ex-Muslims, but also like other ex-people. Yeah. One of the things that helped me... You've got a lot of exes. We've got a lot of exes. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of exes All those ex-girlfriends. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> uh, but what's really good, I think, for ex-Muslims, and if you're a Muslim, to understand what someone might go through, is to watch ex-Jehovah's Witnesses or ex-Jehovah's yeah, yeah. Jews. Yeah. Because it's the same story in many ways, same, right? Being literally. shunned, yeah. feeling yeah. like... You, you you don't know who, that you could leave and all that. Yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. You know? Yeah, and also it can be helpful just to, especially when you're so in your religion, which I, yeah, I know because yeah, I was in yeah, it, and you're yeah. kind of like, no, it makes sense, it makes yeah, sense. And then you're like, well, Christianity is kind of yeah. stupid though. And then yeah, when yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, you... I believe in three gods, one like, that. Ugh. Which, by the way, is kind of wrong. Like, most Muslims don't understand don't other understand. theologies. No. Yeah. Like, no. Hinduism is not. Yeah, oh, worshiping worship. of religion. No, it's like no. the idols is like the Kaaba. Like you yeah. worship the Kaaba then, but yeah. you don't because yeah. you're kind of it's a replica. Yeah. Anyway, it's like yeah, they, they, they don't get the thing is they don't want to get it because yeah, yeah. it's um, easier to say oh yeah. you're idol worshippers. Yeah. So you don't easier. worship idols. Yeah, it's so much easier. But I, I suppose it would be helpful to see them leaving that religion yeah. and then go oh yeah it's yeah, a good yeah, thing yeah. there and then you kind of reflect on your yeah, own yeah. self you're like oh wait a minute I always say this with um, with Muslims who find it get stuck and I understand why they get stuck they get stuck with ex-Muslim rights right mm. and you know well why does your family have to accept you because you you, you rejected them so I'm like cool so when a Muslim converts to Islam yeah. and they're from a Sikh family and their family cut them off which has happened to a lot of converts oh, I yeah. know you're okay with that and oh no no yeah, no, yeah, the yeah. family should accept them oh wait why are you having that hypocrisy yeah, right yeah, yeah. double standards double standards was it double fallacious double standards <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep like yeah. <laughs> it was the best. All these philosophical <laughs> ideas. I, yeah. I keep saying this. Like, I keep going. Oh, I'll take everything out of context. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah I love oh. it. I love what it. you guys oh. don't know is that in that video, um, I can't remember why we were. I think I started like rapping at MUS, and, I, yeah. and since then, she's been like she, I, she was like. Literally, yeah, I'm walking around the house going M U S L I M. The other thing I keep going is Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm a Muslim. How's that worked out for you? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, I like the song, man. Sure. I don't care. So now being an ex-Muslim, I want to know how, I mean, what you guys think, basically. How has your life changed? Um, I would say that when I left Islam, one of the first feelings that I had was, obviously there's a lot of sad, like sadness and regret. Like I've invested a lot of time in this religion. I really believed in it and it's not true. But once you get over that, yeah, sorry. <laughs> once, yeah. <laughs> once, you, once you get over that sob story, yeah. Uh, then it's actually quite empowering because I realise yeah, like yeah. if I do something good, 
if I help someone, yeah. I'm not doing it for reward in the in, in the heaven or hell, whatever. I'm doing it because it's a good action and I'm a good person. And the and the opposite is true. So for me, it like I felt so empowered because it was like the, I can't blame anyone for anything. I can't have a go at anyone. Yeah, yeah. It's me. It's yeah. it's you. So for me, it was a very empowering thing. Yeah. And I was like, yes, like I'm gonna do it, man. I'm gonna do yeah. it. I'm, I'm gonna smash life. I'm gonna not wait for afterlife. And you, yeah. you wronged me, and you didn't do this to me. Yeah. Like, no, this is it. This yeah. is it. This life becomes so much more precious yeah, yeah. Yeah. when you realize there's no hereafter, mate. Right? Yeah. So make make a stop having regrets. Mm. If you wanna do something, go do it. Unless it's gonna kill someone, but. You know, <laughs> all, the, all, the, all, the, all the dreams or desires or ambitions yeah. you have, do it, man. Stop yeah. wasting your time. Stop I agree. Wasting your time. I, I kind of felt, oh, I don't, I don't know how to say this, but I kind of felt in some ways like I could be a better person. That sounds kind of yeah. lame. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, because I didn't, I didn't have this view of, well, that person's going to go to hell. Cause, <laughs> you know, yeah. it was, I'll see I, you I, in hell. <laughs> it's like, it didn't have that kind of like, <laughs> it, it wasn't kind of like, well, I have the right religion you have. And I always hated that. I always wanted mm. to be like, equals with people yeah. whoever I met I always hated the fact that I was like oh so you're a Muslim and it's like people you I don't felt, like otherizing yeah, yeah I exactly yeah. I just kind of like just loving everyone yeah. equally and whatever but so I, I, I love that about it and also I don't know I don't know what, no, what do you think I, I, it's, say, it's so similar for me like yeah. as a Muslim like I, I think there was a there was this idea that we want to make the whole world an ummah mm. but there's a limit to that because there's so much angry language towards the other. Mm. Yeah. And now, like, you know, I, I would consider myself like a humanist. So for me, it's about all people and it's about, yeah. like, you know, and the planet and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So I can kind of be a bit umbaya and, like, everything is yeah, going together. Yeah, it's a bit more hippie. Yeah, but it's at the same not. time, like, what it's made me is also a little bit more um, my decision making has changed in how I view the world. So, you know, what we were talking about politics before. So for me now, I'm like, wait a second, there is no justice. We have to make our justice. And yeah. sometimes there just isn't justice. There, isn't, like, there yeah. wasn't always a perfect answer. No, and it, yeah. it explains why the world is so messed up. Because yeah. if you have a God, it's like, well, you know, okay, we've got to fight for this kind of justice, but this is a bit crazy and unfair. Mm. And now it's like, of course it's unfair. People are just making <laughs> stuff up. But that means I can also push the world in the direction I want. Mm. Yeah. So with a lot of the ex-Muslim stuff, it's like, well, I feel like this is such a institutional, communal, religiously sanctioned injustice mm. in how yeah. we get treated so either i can sit there and cry yeah. or we can try to do something about it so it's exactly what you're saying and i think you can kind um, of make an impact yeah, yeah. I, I think maybe this may be a related point but a, lo a lot of time with religions or certain very strong political I, uh, um, sort of philosophies like maybe I, I see a very strong similarity between theocracy and communism. But this, it's, it's a utopia. This, this utopian thing. This utopian thing. Mm. That there, there is just a perfect model yeah. out there. We just haven't got there yeah, yet. Yeah. But when you leave that, you think, no, no, this is it. There is no perfect model. Yeah. We just, like, it's we always going to be like 90% great and then 10% crap. You know what it's crap. like? It's like growing up. You know when you grow up and you realize, wait, your parents are just people who yeah, figure yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because when, so when you're a kid, when you're a kid, you kind of... They know everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you realize, wait a second, they think that dinosaurs <laughs> or like you know like they you know what i mean like and you're like what yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know or, no yeah. you're right i mean yeah when you realize oh wait i'm an adult now yeah, yeah, yeah. so am i supposed to have like yeah I, I the way my parents knew stuff am i also because i, don't, yeah, I can't yeah, even yeah. operate a microwave yeah, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so am true. i supposed to know it's everything so true, and so when true. you realize like the government is run by people like you just people yeah, or yeah. the people in the mosque yeah. are people like you yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't have the answers yeah, and they don't yeah. have the answers either you, you know who is it um bill burr is yeah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah such is my favorite yeah he has a really good bit so he's catholic but he like you know why he doesn't take catholicism so seriously he's like because you know I'll be like there in the, and there's a guy at the pulpit and he's like, you know, this is the way to live your best life. Yeah. And he's like, then I'll have dinner and this guy's name is Steve. And he's just a dude with yeah. kids. Just, yeah. you know? yeah. And he's like, that is, yeah. that's the same for us. Yeah. Like, it is yeah. just a dude, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. they're just people. It's just just people. people. They're not people. special. I think, I think, and this is one of the things, when you realize the world is not perfect and it will never be perfect, mm. you stop living in this illusion. Mm. Like, oh, it, it will be and we've just got to yeah, follow yeah, the Sharia yeah, this yeah, way or if it's yeah. a communist yeah. thing or whatever thing. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you get, when that, that uh, veil is lifted from your eyes, and realize there is no perfection, then it actually makes you work harder. Because yeah, 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 there is yeah. no Imam Mahdi to get no, you out. No, no, yeah. There is no Jesus yeah. to get you out. Yeah, yeah, there is exactly. no God. You can't just make a dua and it'll yeah. go away. There is, there is yeah. no other hereafter out yeah. of claws, yeah. out of yeah. thing yeah, yeah, to yeah, save yeah. you. You've yeah. got to do it yourself. Yeah. So and you know, I think it's quite interesting with when when I when I, I was speaking to a friend of mine about this with ex-Muslims and how we deal with disputes, right? Mm -hmm. So ex-Muslims are so diverse in their views, right? And we're very open about it because yeah. obviously we've left yeah. a hardcore ideology so we're not gonna so say yeah. Yeah. and mm. and they're not always nice spaces in terms of where they debate but there are certain spaces which are really interesting where you can have quiet 
controversial topics like mm. trans rights or mm. you know mm. or, or like like Trump or, or Brexit like, or whatever or Brexit yeah. Yeah. and you can have actually quite good dis- discussions where people have such differing views and people's views change mm-hmm. because they're, they're like well I left Islam it was a bigger deal. I was so sure yeah, yeah, yeah. so maybe there's something yeah, else you can wrong. change your view yeah, yeah which yeah. is which is great because yeah as a Muslim you kind of just think this is it and it's just yeah, in and that it's bubble. harder to change the view because yeah. like theology means that there's this objective yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know I mean it isn't but also yeah, you yeah. think that yeah, so yeah. you think you think the rest of the world has objective answers to yeah. it and there is no yeah. there just yeah. aren't yeah, yeah. Yeah. like You know, it's interesting how you guys are very much kind of mm. I don't know if you always have been like this where you think more about the bigger picture of mm. Islam I don't think I did as much as a Muslim I don't know if it's just I was in my own little bubble but I kind of always just thought of selfishly myself um, no I just don't <laughs> know I mean as in like I always just thought of like my own personal journey with Islam and even like little things with um So I would always think, okay, you have to do things for the sake of Allah. I don't know if you had this as well. Mm. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like... Your niya has to be always Your niya has to be... Allah. So even if you're doing something for someone else, it can't be like, I just yeah. care about this person. It has to be for Allah, otherwise it won't count, is yeah. basically what I was told. So for me, I don't know, this is such a weird thing to say, but I remember just being like, you know what? I can just do it because I've always wanted to feel like I can just do it just because I want to care about this person mm. and just because I want to do it I, for the sake I of it. I find that statement... Uh, for the sake of Allah, one of the most patronizing and condescending. Yes. I love you for the sake of Allah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it means, hang on, I'm do you only, actually love me? I'm, then? I'm, I'm just like, giving you advice for the sake of Allah. Love, is it? Yeah, yeah, But it's, for the sake of Allah, it's always, yeah. I'm advising myself before I advise you oh, and for the sake so of Allah. Cringe, I'm always, so cringe. <laughs> well, the worst thing is like when uh, when I left Islam, like people messaged me, like trying to, like, hey, just because I love you, bro. I'm not, and then they'll start going on this rant about. Yeah. And the thing is, they all know that I know theology. Better than a lot yeah. of them. No, yeah. I'm, I'm not an expert, but you know. Mm. And so they'll message me and they'll give me this, and they know that I know more about theology. So they won't go into the theology. They'll be like, you know, I made dua for you yesterday. I just think that you're, you know, you're just misled by all mm. these white people, whatever it is. And I'm like, yo, white. listen, man, you're just ignoring my journey. I mean, Why do white people get blamed for everything? Yeah. 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 But you know, yeah. 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 but, but you know, but what do I do, mate? <laughs> I have to say, yeah. I think maybe I'm mischaracterizing like my journey now because it's not just about the bigger picture. I think the bigger picture is what's important to me in many ways. Mm. Okay. The real day to day is has changed so much as well. Like okay. so for me, like you know who you can date, what your future looks like, mm. it's yeah. massively impacted, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Because mm. like as a Muslim, you cannot marry a non-Muslim, mm. right? You just cannot do that. Well, unless, unless you want to do a Christian or Jew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even then, but even you, then, you couldn't. I, I wouldn't. Could, I wouldn't yeah. be allowed to. Yeah, 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 sure. Even if you do marry a Christian, yeah. you're trying to convert. And them. then also, yeah. you know, there's this whole thing like you know, children are great, so you can have children. So you need to have children. And you know, yeah. th- there's so many aspects of your life which are c- controlled by or directed by Islam. Yeah. And like, mm. you have choice because you can kind of do what you want. But it's yeah. sin, and sin is such a big thing. Mm. It's a big burden on you. Yeah. While now it's like, because I can make the choice, if I do something that's nasty to another person, mm. if I'm an empathetic person, it's going to mm. hurt me. That's the sin that I feel. Exactly, mm. right? exactly. It's and not just this yeah, punishment yeah, yeah, feeling. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like when you're kind, yeah. it's kind of like... It means of, more. It means, it means more. more. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. so true. It and that, that's what I was trying to get yeah. to. You said, it, you said yeah. it better than I did. Yeah, Cheers. exactly. Everything just means more. And uh, you're doing it for the sake of that kind of good because thing. Because it's not for the sake of Allah. Yeah. Or because not for the sake yeah. of the state. Because not sake, yeah. the sake of some race. Not because you were told to it's as because, well. because, you know what, you wanted yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, to be, and to be honest, a lot of these things, mm-hmm. like, we have these biases even when you leave Islam. Right? Yeah. It's not that like they go away. It just gets a little bit better. Less. You right? water down a bit. And yeah. you hopefully, because I do see ex-Muslims who leave Islam and they think that suddenly they're not sexist. They're not this. They're not yeah. that. You yeah. still can be. You can yeah. still be. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You can still be. You're not like but, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you speak for yourself, Marwa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So I think we'll end it there. But thanks to you guys for joining us. And um, yeah, it's been really, really fun. If you guys want to see another one of these kind of casual conversations, definitely let me know in the comments down below and yeah i'll see you guys soon stay in touch bye you still what is that i don't know what that is he does that every time it's not like the he does does like in every w or it's a v if you do vids oh wow anyway you have not left seven kings (laughs) (laughs) no That was really fun really though. Cool. I like that. That was so much fun. Uh-huh. It wasn't even that exhausting because well, I think it was like a chat. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like just the, felt the, the, the Zach and Nike one was like, I, my energy yeah, yeah, yeah. just drained from... Mm.